this video, I'm going to work through an example problem uh, employing the general solution procedure uh, that was discussed in, in the previous video. So I've got a problem uh, depicted here, uh, basically a wheeled cart uh, that is being pushed on um, on a handle, say on the side, uh, with a 30 newton force. We've got some given geometry, uh, a given weight of this cart of 100 newtons, and we want to determine how fast this, this cart is going to be uh, moving, or, or maybe more accurately, how it's going to be accelerating uh, due to the uh, inclusion of this force. So we can start uh, by kind of identifying what's going on. One, you know, we, we figure this is a rigid body, right? Um, it's large enough and, and has forces applied to it, uh, which are not applied through the center of gravity, which means that rotation is, is a consideration. Uh, and therefore, I would say we would treat this as a rigid body and, and rather than a particle. Um, locations of interest, where the force is applied over here um, at the uh, 30 newtons, where the wheels are making contact with the ground at A and B, um, and the center of gravity, of course. So we're going to start by setting up a free body diagram. So for my free body diagram, I'm going to uh, represent my cart again pictorially. And I've separated it from the ground. Of course, I never really drew the ground over here on the first picture, so it doesn't look a lot different. But I'm going to apply my external load of 30 newtons. I'm going to apply my weight at the center of gravity of 100 newtons. And then because I've separated this from the ground, I need reaction forces at the wheels. And I'm going to label these Na and Nb. This free body diagram, I'm going to set equal to a kinematic diagram. And my kinematic diagram, uh, for my kinematic diagram, I need to determine what sort of motions I expect to be possible. Um, of course, since I'm pushing this from the left, I'm going to expect that a, an acceleration in the uh, horizontal or x direction is possible. Um, since this is resting on the, on the ground and I'm not applying any external loads trying to you know, lift it or anything. I'm not expecting any uh, translation in the y direction. And I'm also going to say I'm not really expecting any rotation uh, because I'm, go I'm going to make the assumption that my wheels are going to stay on the ground. Now, of course, it is possible that that wouldn't be true, um, but to start with, we're going to assume that it is. So I've got my free body diagram equal to my kinematic diagram. If I look at uh, my situation, and you know this uh, going, uh, this this is steps one through three basically, of what I previously described in a general solution procedure. So if I go to step four, um, I want to identify how many unknowns I have. Well, we can see these uh, basically right on our diagrams, right? We have an A and B. Um, mass we can get from the weight, so our acceleration. So we end up with three unknowns that we're going to need to solve for. So we want to go ahead and set up the appropriate equations corresponding uh, to the situation. So for a planar situation like this, I don't have anything going on in a third dimension that I've specified. I'm going to go ahead and use my three standard equations of motion. And start writing those out. So looking at the x direction, my free body diagram, I only have one force in that direction. And it is equal to uh, my mass times my acceleration. It's probably a good time to figure out what my mass is. Just do this off to the side. Mass equals weight over gravity. So 100 over 9.81 is going to be 
kilograms. Great, I can fill in that first equation. Uh, summation of forces in the y direction, we can see that I have Na and Nb both going upwards, which you know we likely would designate as our positive direction. We have 100 newtons from the weight coming down, and we have nothing on our kinematic diagram, so we set that side equal to zero. And finally, summation of moments. Now, in order to sum the moments, we have to pick a location uh, that we want to sum around. Um, that's kind of arbitrary. We can pick pretty much any point because it always has to uh, be true. The equation has to be true regardless of where we sum around. But I'm going to pick the center of gravity. It's sometimes convenient as a location. Um, reasons I may have for picking a different location. Uh, for example, I could pick to sum the moments around point A or point B. Um, and sometimes that's convenient because it eliminates an unknown. You know, if I, if I sum the moments around A, my force Na passes through point A, which means that it doesn't contribute to the moment, so it would eliminate an unknown from that equation. But I've already said that I'm going to do it around the center of gravity, so we'll just go ahead with that. So summing uh, the moments around the center of gravity, um, typically counterclockwise uh, is considered positive, um, just as a convention, uh, anything that causes counterclockwise rotation. So the force NB I'm going to start with going up causes counterclockwise rotation around the center of gravity. So I'm going to write NB times the distance of 0 0.5 meters. The contribution from NA is clockwise because it's on the left, or the line of action is on the left of the center of gravity, it's going to cause clockwise rotation. So I'm going to subtract Na times 0 0.5. The 100 Newton force doesn't contribute because it passes through that center of gravity, uh, but the 30 Newton force that's applied to the handle does, uh, and that's uh, above the center of gravity, which means it's going to cause clockwise rotation, which means it's going to negatively contribute to my equation here. And it's at a distance of 0 0.25 meters. And I have not put uh, any sort of expected rotation on my kinematic diagram, so I'm going to set that equal to 0. So I have three equations. They contain my three unknowns that I'm looking for which means I can go ahead and, and you know, brute force my way uh, through these calculations. The first equation allows me to solve uh, directly for acceleration. So I can divide the 10.9 cross, and I end up with 2.944 meters per second squared. The second two equations uh, I can solve for Na and Nb, basically solving one for the other. Uh, and then plugging in and just uh, stepping my way through. And if I do that as a result, I would end up with Na equals 45 newtons, Nb equals 55 newtons. Now the last step uh, I referred to as, as the sanity check, and this is just kind of a, you know, holistic, take a step back, look at my results and see if they make sense. And when I look at these results, basically what I find is that I have this 2.944 meters per second. That's, um, you know, hard sometimes to decide, decide if that seems reasonable. You know, if, if that was constant after a second, we'd be going 2.944 meters per second um, in speed um, of, put, you know, after a, one second of pushing, that's somewhere between six and seven miles per hour, which would be a fast walking speed. So maybe that's reasonable and, and we probably wouldn't be pushing that hard for that long. Otherwise we'd be very quickly running down the road with this thing, but it's, in, it's, it's within reason. Um, my forces, 45 and 55, if this was just stationary, we would expect those both to be equal to 50 Newtons, right? Because we have a 100 Newton force and these are evenly spaced, the wheels are evenly spaced around that, and if we weren't applying any force here, we would expect those to both be 50. 
they're slightly off from that, right? Because we're pushing on this cart. So we're pushing on the cart such that um, it's not tilted, it's sort of tilted slightly forward, right? And that forward um, lean to it uh, relieves some of the weight on the back wheel and puts a little bit more weight on the front wheel. So that, that makes sense, that split between those numbers. Um, I think that this also would show us that we were correct in our assumption uh, not to put any rotation on our kinematic diagram. And the reason we know that is because uh, the force Na, uh, which is the, the, the load on the back wheel, is positive, meaning there is a force being applied to the wheel from the ground and vice versa, the wheel is pushing on the ground. If that was negative, it would indicate that there's a problem in our, in our solution, right? That we've pushed the cart and removed all load from that wheel and mathematically we have a problem and we're missing the fact that the cart is actually tipping over. So if that load on an A went to zero and or below zero, uh, then we'd say, well, actually we're pushing too hard or too high on the cart and it's it's tipping, it's or it has tipped over. So um, that would help us kind of make sure that we didn't make a, a wrong assumption in our in our solution procedure. All right, thank you.